All right. Um, so hi guys, I'm Mayank. Uh, I'm the developer tools manager and the release manager for OpenMRS. And today I'm going to talk about how you can use Spring Security and Spring Security over two frameworks to implement security as an aspect in your Java-based web applications. So let's say that you have a simple client-server architecture set up and that you have programmed all the business logic uh, for your web application on the server side of it. Now you are thinking of implementing some advanced things like uh, role-based access control, which can be uh, that the same page is viewed differently by the admin, by the moderator, by the guest, or by a registered user, or CAS, or what to authorization server, or detect a CSR if attack, etc. So Spring Security allows you to do that. Uh, how it does is Spring Security is essentially a filter chain which is backed by an API. So it intercepts all the request and response objects which are directed to your server and uh, it passes it on to the filter chain first. So when the first filter receives uh, the request and response objects, it does some work on it. It interacts with the API to load some configuration and data and then it forwards those re uh, request and response objects to the next filter in the chain. So this process goes on until we hit the last filter and finally hit the end point uh, of your web application. So at that point, uh, you can inquire with the uh, Spring Security API to ask questions like, oh, uh, was there a CSRF attack in this request? Or uh, does this person even have the privileges to hit this endpoint or not and take appropriate actions? Uh, so let me just talk about uh, the flow and configuration of uh, Spring Security. So uh, the first thing we will see is a delegating filter proxy. Uh, it is basically uh, uh, a, a configuration which uh, defines an, uh, the entry point into Spring Security. So you'll say, uh, you'll give a URL pattern and anything that matches that URL pattern will be delegated to Spring Security framework. The next thing is HTTP security or web security. So this is used to define uh, the protected resources of your application and uh, the conditions for access to it. So let's say I have a URL slash admin slash star and I say role equal to admin. So anyone who has the permissions of admin will only be able to access uh, those resources. The next thing is the authentication manager which is essentially an interface which packages a lot of uh, authentication providers. An authentication provider uh, gives you an implementation of uh, uh, say OAuth uh, uh, authentication management or uh, uh, the different protocols which are available for authentication. Uh, how it does that is it uses a user detail service uh, which connects with your database, local database or remote database or uh, services on the Facebook server uh, to get the token and stuff. Uh, the next component is an access decision manager which is probably the main component that decides uh, whether uh, the uh, request is going to hit the endpoint or not. Uh, it is based on a number of things. Uh, one of them uh, is a voting based system. So uh, based on the if then else conditions that you define, uh, the final decision is made uh, by the access uh, decision manager. So uh, Spring Security is a framework and Spring Security is built on top of it. Spring Security provides you a lot of hooks and uh, ways to customize it and Spring Security builds an authorization server and a resource server on top of it. And uh, Spring Security OAuth 2 itself provides a number of ways to configure the, those authorization servers and resource servers. Uh, so uh, one of them is the client detail service configurer, uh, which uses the user detail service which I just talked about. Uh, there are authorization and token uh, endpoints which are protected uh, resources or the HTTP security resources I talked about. And we also have grant types. Uh, if you have some idea about OAuth 2, you could probably tell uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, the next thing I want to talk about, uh, show you is a quick demo. One minute. All right. So, uh, Spring Security OAuth 2 can be uh, configured uh, via uh, XML or. Um, all right. Uh, so, Spring Security OAuth 2 can be configured via XML or. Uh, using annotations. Uh, uh, so the amount of code that you need to write is only about 20 lines and you will have a, a OAuth 2 authorization serv server running on top of Spring Security. So uh, the process would be uh, set up the uh, dependencies of Spring Security, set up the dependencies of Spring Security OAuth 2 and then write 20 lines of XML or uh, lesser uh, lines uh, in terms of annotations and uh, there you have an OAuth 2 authorization server. So the video is not playing but I'll definitely upload it and uh, a few uh, the uh, links to the slides and stuff. How much time do we have? No more time. No more time. All right. So uh, I hope that was uh, helpful uh, to people. But I'll be around. So uh, let me know if you want to talk more about it. Uh, just find me. Thanks. Thanks, Maya.